All right, let's start this video out and let's just say I am all in for e-bikes. I know they're not for everybody, but there's something about them. It's the mix of technology and bikes, and those are my two favorite things. Also, I feel like the future of bikes is e-bikes. Will they become the norm? I don't think they'll be the norm, but I definitely think that you will probably know somebody in the next five years that actually has one when you go out and ride. Most of you know that I have a Kona 2013, and it's the Satori model, and I absolutely love this bike. I have had this bike for about eight years now, and I feel like it's time for me to adventure into the world of what is out there with new bikes. I like to do my research when it comes to this stuff. I wanna be in the up and up of what actually is new in the biking world, all the new terminology, and uh, be able to buy a bike feeling educated and feeling like I made the right choice. So I have picked four e-bikes uh, for this review, and I wanted to go with brands that I know my local bike shops can get. So this category that I went with, I looked at my bike and I knew that I paid $3,000 for my bike. I like the specs that are on it. I like the components. I, like, I felt like whenever I bought that bike that I was getting a bike that had good components on it that would last for a long time. And I still feel that way. I still really, really enjoy it. I still think that it was a, a great choice and a great purchase. So I wanted to kind of go that same direction with e-bikes and I knew it was gonna be a little bit more than 3,000. So I pinpointed right about $5,000, which seems absolutely crazy for a bike. The reality of it is that is the price point that I feel that you're starting to get into a really good e-bike. So I wanted to get started with a brand that you guys have probably heard of if you have looked anywhere into the e-bike market and that's Specialized, their Turbo Levo model. This model is a really nice bike. It comes in about three different colors that you can pick from. This one starts right at $5,000. The Turbo Levo at this price point has an M5 alloy frame and 29 inch wheels. It comes with a custom Specialized 2.1 motor. They claim that this motor is actually 15% smaller and 11% lighter than other brands. They've created their own software for this motor. It's called TCU, Turbo Connect Unit. And basically this allows you to connect up to their app so you can look at battery life, you can change settings, um, kind of um, just play around with it where all your controls aren't on the bike, they're built into an app. It comes with a 500 watt hour capacity battery and it's fully removable. That seems to be kind of a standard, which I think is a great thing. As for components, this has a RockShox 35 Silver TK 160 millimeter travel fork, and it has a RockShox 150 millimeter uh, shock on the back. It comes with a dropper post made by a company called uh, TransX, and it has pretty much all SRAM components, SRAM guide disc brakes, and SRAM drivetrain, which they're using the NX Eagle 12 speed setup, which seems to be a pretty popular setup nowadays. But that's the Turbo Levo. I really like this one. I think the frame is a little unique looking, but uh, it's not too bad. The next one that I wanted to review is the Giant Trance XE Plus Pro 29.3. That's right. This name is absolutely insane. I don't know what Giant was thinking when they came up with this naming convention. This one comes in right at $5,000, just like the Turbo Levo. Uh, and you can guess by the name, it's a 29er. Uh, it also rocks an aluminum frame, which Giant put their own twist on the motor too, just like Specialized did. Uh, they call it the Giant Sync Drive Pro. It's powered by a Yamaha motor, but I think it's got a few tweaks in the software that are specific to Giant. The battery that comes with it is also custom, which I'm not a big fan of this. I need to do more research and find out exactly what this means, but it's called the Energy Pack Smart 625. I don't see where they talk about the watt hours on this. I don't know if it's 625 watt hours or if that number is just a made up number by Giant. What components it comes with, it has a RockShox 35 Gold R Debon Air 
and it's 150 millimeters, so it's 10 millimeters less than most of the other bikes in its price range. It does come with a Fox Float DPS performance shock, which is a little different because it seems like all the other brands are matching up uh, the fork with the shock. It comes with a giant branded uh, dropper post. I don't think they make it, um, but it, I don't know what brand actually it is, but it's just giant. And I know in years past that's giant has done that with like their wheels and their stems and all that. So they're really big in branding their stuff themselves. One thing I do really like about this one is it's a full Shimano setup. It's got Shimano four piston brakes and it's got the Dior 12 speed uh, drivetrain. I really like Shimano products. I've used Dior in the past. I've got SLX on my current bike and I absolutely love it. So the only downfall of this particular bike from what I can see is a little bit smaller fork, but the bottom bracket is really bulky looking. They still have that e-bike look to the Giant and I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of that. So the next brand that I wanted to talk about, and I almost didn't put this particular brand in here because this brand is very expensive right now for their e-bike because of the materials that they use. It's Santa Cruz and they have two different models. The one that I chose was the less expensive of the two. It's the Heckler. It's a very, very nice bike. If you're used to the Bronson, this is supposed to be similar spec wise, uh, but in an e-bike version. The downfall is, is this one's $2,000 more than all these other bikes. It comes in right at $7,000. So I was kind of hesitant about actually including this particular one just because it's so much more. But the reason why it's so much more is they don't make an aluminum version. It's just strictly a carbon bike. So you're going to get a really, really nice bike with really high end materials right out the door. Uh, this one does have two different wheel sizes you can choose from, either 27.5 or you can do their MX version, which is a 29er in the front and a 27.5 in the back. So business up front, party in the back, you know. Uh, this one comes with a 504 watt hour battery, kind of a weird size. I don't know why they had to put the four. I think everybody else just probably rounds it to 500. It does have a Shimano motor, it's the EP8 motor, and they claim that this one's actually a lighter version than what last year's Shimano motor was. Components wise, it has a RockShox in the front and the back. The front is going to be 160 millimeters and the back is going to be 150 millimeters. And uh, this one does come with the SRAM NX Eagle 12 speed, just like the, um, the Turbo Levo and also the guide brakes. It does have a dropper post made by a company called SDG TELUS. So that's the Santa Cruz uh, Heckler. It looks really, really nice, but you do have to prepare. That's $7,000, primarily because you're getting a carbon bike instead of an aluminum bike. My last bike on the list is the Trek Rail 5. This bike is pretty interesting because Trek makes a lot of e-mountain bikes. They make, just, they make a lot of e-bikes. This comes in matte black and olive gray. I've never heard of olive gray, but it looks nice online. This one does have a 500 watt hour battery, just like the Turbo Levo and almost like the Santa Cruz. This one runs the Bosch motor though. I've heard really good things about these Bosch motors. It's the Bosch Performance Line CX 250 watt motor. I've heard these motors are quieter and they have a little bit better punch at the start. So. I'm really interested in that particular aspect of it. This one is a 29er. I thought it was a little odd that was hard to find. I had to go into the spec sheet and down to the wheel size to actually find out whether or not this was a 29er or a 27.5. Front fork is a RockShox 35 Gold RL 160 millimeter. The shock is a RockShox Deluxe Select Plus 150 millimeter. It comes with the same dropper post that the Turbo Levo has, the, uh, the Trans X. This surprised me a little bit. It comes with Tektro brakes. I haven't heard a lot about Tektro brakes, so I was kind of told that whenever I bought my bike, there were brands that had Tektro that they were kind of off-brand. I don't know that for a fact. If you've used Tektro brakes and you've had really good luck with them and you like them, let me know in the comments below. It does have a SRAM drivetrain. It's the SX12 speed. So you're not getting the NX Eagle that all the other ones were coming with, but you're still getting a name brand drivetrain, which is nice. So I haven't ridden any of these bikes, but 
looking at the specs and the looks of them, which one would I pick? If I were going just off of looks, I would get the Trek. I really like the way it looks. It looks closest to a regular mountain bike out of all of them. You can always upgrade the components. Uh, it's not cheap, but you can upgrade the components. You can't upgrade the looks of the frame without replacing the entire frame. I don't even know if you can buy just frames. So this is just the beginning of my adventure in this whole research process that I wanna to do to uh, figure out exactly uh, what I wanna get when I decide to go buy one. I really wanna be educated on this. I'm hoping over this next year that I can go out and go to some demos and test ride several different brands maybe hook up with a local bike shop here and get a demo unit to be able to take out for the day and really give it a try and see exactly what I think of e-bikes. If you guys found this video to be helpful or you just enjoyed it, go ahead, hit that like button. It really helps out my videos. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the bikes I reviewed, what bikes I should look at next. What should I consider? Should I get an e-bike? Should I not get an e-bike? And if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe. It really helps out the channel and I'd greatly appreciate it. And as always, get out there, run, bike, build, and just have fun. We'll see you in the next one. Hmm. Bikes. <laughs>